Hey, what's up my nerds? This video we're gonna be talking about arrays in JavaScript. So yeah, finally something a little bit new. <laughs> First though, you gotta check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. And if you ain't heard of Dev Mountain and you've been watching this series, I don't know if you haven't been paying attention or what, but I mention them in every single video. <laughs> they offer JavaScript-based web development classes, as well as classes in iOS and other cool things. So you can go check out their website and see their array of options. <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> it was totally on accident. So go check them out. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. They have classes online and in person, so there's no excuse. <laughs> go get two years worth of knowledge in a matter of weeks. Save yourself some time. All right, so what exactly is an array? Well, you can think of an array as a collection of things. So the way you create an array is like this. Let, and then you give it a name, and typically all the stuff in the array is going to be related in some way. So typically it'll be of the same thing. So for example, we could have ages. So every element is an age. And then you create the array with square brackets, and then you can put the items in here. So we could say 12, 34, 15, whatever we wanted to put. And then we close it with the square bracket and then you put the semicolon. So square bracket, elements, square bracket, semicolon. So the things inside of it are typically known as elements. Now you might also hear items or members. I believe the official term is elements, but you don't have to be super anal about that. Just pick something, usually it's elements. So when people are talking about the elements of an array, they're talking about the members or the items inside of the array. Now, every single element gets an index. So an index is basically a way to describe what position these elements are in. So the first item has index zero, the second has index one, and the third has index two. So it starts at zero and counts up. <laughs> so it's always one less than the item number. So if we're talking about the third item, then it's the second index. And you can reference that item using that index. So if you wanted to get that item, you just say ages, and then in square brackets, you would just put a two. And this is going to basically give us the value 15. So it's a dynamic way of grabbing that element. So rather than hard coding 15, we can store that in the array and then just reference that position. So that's gonna come up a lot, especially when we're talking about loops, because you can use a variable in here. So for example, you could do something like ages i, and that i can come from a for loop, for example. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with the indexes. Now there's another thing with arrays you need to understand, and that is the array length. So if we do ages dot length, this is a property. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell us how long the array is. So in this situation, it would give us three. So we can use that to make sure we don't go beyond the end of the array. So if we need to make sure we stop at some point. So for example, if we just in kept increasing i, we need to know when to stop. <laughs> and we can use that length to figure it out. So you also gotta keep in mind that the index is always one less than the number of elements. So this is three, but the highest index is two. So <laughs> you wanna make sure you don't go to i equals three, you wanna stop at i equals two. So you can always use ages.length minus one. So in general, if you do ages.length minus one, that is going to be used to grab the last element. Now one gotcha with JavaScript arrays is that there can actually be gaps in the array. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, we might have ages.length being, let's say the value 30, but there might only be three elements in there and then 27 undefined. <laughs> yeah, so JavaScript arrays are kind of annoying in that way, but you just kind of got to get used to it. So for example, here's something we could do. We could take ages.length and we could assign that the value 30. And that didn't actually add any valuable data points in the array, it just changed the value of this property. So other languages might have this same property, but it's probably read-only. In JavaScript, you can write to that property, meaning you can change the length. 
and then all of those extra spots that get added onto this array, they're just empty, so undefined. So this means that there can be gaps. The other thing is we can actually assign a value to an index that doesn't exist. So if we did ages of 100 and assigned that the value A, for example, well, this is actually going to do the same thing. It's going to extend that length to 101. Why 101? Because the length is always going to be at least one more than the highest index. So those are two things you gotta know about JavaScript arrays. One, you can change the length property, putting gaps in the array. Two, is that you can assign to an index that does not exist and it will extend that array. So JavaScript is very loose in this nature, so you just gotta make sure you know what you're doing. For example, if you're using a for loop to go through all of the elements, well, it's going to hit every single index whether or not there's an item there or not. So in order to fix that, there are other ways to go through an array or you can do a conditional inside of the for loop. There's different ways around that and that's what we're gonna be talking about later on in the series. But for now, just be aware that the arrays can have gaps. That's all I got as an intro to arrays. What we're gonna be doing now is in the next video, we're going to briefly discuss multi-dimensional arrays, how they work and what they look like inside of JavaScript. And then we'll be getting on the computer, typing some of this stuff out and getting some hands-on experience. So hopefully you guys are excited for the upcoming videos. I'd really appreciate it if you would take the effort to subscribe to this channel. It means the world to me and definitely helps me out a lot. So thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna be talking about multidimensional arrays.